Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So today I'm going to be doing a hashtag. And this one is called 21 Tarot Questions. This was created by um, Lisa Pepez. She was doing, her and Peggy were doing a shenanigans. I believe it was on Sunday evening. And... I was in it. I enjoy it. I love their shenanigans, um, lives and stuff. And they started asking people, a whole, well, Peggy really did, was asking people a whole bunch of, asking them to um, create questions. And she they were going to post it in the Facebook group. And then um, Lisa decided to do a really fun hashtag with it. So I wanted to jump on this and do this one as well. So there are 21 prompts, so let's get started. Hopefully it's not a super long one. So what is the deck that you'll have to pry out of uh, my cold, dead hands? For that prompt, I actually have two decks. The first one is the Lightseers Indie Edition. This one... Gosh, man, I love this deck so much. I think it was like the first deck that I really considered like a soul deck. And it's the, between this one and another one are the first ones where it really, really clicked with me. There was another one, which I'm going to be talking about. Um... In this that really helped me learn tarot like really start clicking but this particular deck helped me see the light side and the shadow side and the integration of those it was the book that really helped me with that and the artwork is something that just calls to me well some of them I hate this freaking card but the majority of the deck I love. And so it would be this deck, the indie version. I don't really care for the mass market version too much. The card stock is not fabulous. And the other one is the Bone Stone and Earth Flesh. This deck I love so much. I worked with this for an entire year after I got it. And yeah. You can tell. <laughs> you can see, uh, you know, it's kind of tore up the gilding. But it started chipping right away. And for me, I know that that's because I put a lot of lotion on my hands as well. So, but this artwork and the book itself, it's so damn good. And I, you know what, I am happy that she is going to be going, or they are going to be going mass market with this. I am grateful for that, for a lot of people to be able to also um, get this particular deck and the artwork and the book. And <sighs> my gosh, look at that. Queen of Pentacles. Oh. Yeah. Anatorian's art is just stunning. It just is so expressive. And I was talking about um, her Tarot of the Abyss in the previous uh, video I recorded. Because there's something about her. It's just so expressive. Oh. Anyways, so this is the other one that... You know, you would have to pry it. I mean, you might as well just, well, if I was going to get buried, I'd want to get buried with these decks so that I could use them in the afterlife and do tarot readings for people, right? <laughs> Oops. So the next question is, what is your guilty pleasure deck? And yet again, I should have just left it out. It is the Bonestone and Earth Flesh Tarot. And the reason why is because... 
every time I show it on my channel, I mean, I don't mention it because I don't want to rub salt into wounds, but I know that a lot of people had a lot of bad feelings about this particular deck because of how long it took and the situation that was at hand and the way that it was all handled and how long people had been waiting for this deck. And so I know that one of the only reasons that I was able to get my hands on this deck is because other people had decided that they were not going to wait any longer, so they canceled theirs. So she had more decks available. Although I had been following the progression of this and waiting for it for like three years. Well, two years maybe. I can't remember for sure. You guys know my memory. But... It is kind of like a guilty pleasure that I have it when other people do not, when it is such a great deck. That's why I previously said I am very happy that it is going to be going to another printing so that other people can really get their hands on this beautiful deck. And, you know, hopefully... Hopefully not have those bad feelings anymore and just see the deck and utilize the deck for what it really is, which is just honestly a masterpiece. So that is my guilty pleasure deck also. Um, so the third question is, what's the deck that you wished existed? Just off, off the top of my head, it was True Blood. I loved True Blood. The, I watched the series a couple of times and the series Charmed, the original Charmed. I would love, because there, I mean, there were so many seasons of that, so many different things that they went up against and situations that they went up against, just like in Supernatural, they could do a really kick-ass tarot deck with that. And I just, I loved all the sisters. I loved Charmed. I mean, I've seen Charm so many times because it was like on TNT. I've watched so many reruns of it. Yeah, like lots. So either True Blood Tarot or Charmed Tarot, but done really good, okay? Not like, not like some of the other stuff that I've seen, you know? Actually take the time and use, you know, get all the rights that you could and do just, do those shows justice. So that. So what deck would you give to a new reader? I would give the Lightseers because it's got a phenomenal book and the, the cards are really easy to um, understand. I think the way that um, Chris Ann does her artwork, it's extremely expressive and it's, at least it was for me, it was, and I think for a lot of people, that's why I think sometimes it gets a, a bad rap because people think it's such an easy deck. But this easy deck is what taught me the difference between the light and the shadow. It has it all in there. So the light seers is just like a... I don't think it really... The name gives this deck uh, its justice because it's looked at like it's a fluffy deck when I don't think it's anything of that. I, I love it. So I think it's a wonderful deck for beginners, also because of the book. And the other one, if somebody is like witchy inclined, I would say the Everyday Witch. Both of these are extremely expressive artwork, so it's easy to recall the meanings when you look at the art. It's just so well done. Um, and anything that really has a good guidebook. I think that's going to be the difference. But I would say anything that somebody is really drawn to the artwork, if they're super drawn to the artwork, then they're really going to want to keep on, you know, diving in. And if it's got a good, uh, you know, uh, guidebook, like I said, then there you go. That is half the battle right there. So the next question is, what deck do you want to get along with, but it just never clicked? Well, that is the Wild Unknown Tarot. I got this early on, and 
it, I mean, I would hear people talk about this deck like it was just the end all beat all, right? Like it was just like everything. And it, uh, I mean, yeah, no. I just, some of the artwork is beautiful, but I'm also not a, it's got to be a really good deck for me to use tarot with animals. Probably because I love animals too much. <laughs> not too much. I love them more than I love humans sometimes, <laughs> if I'm just being honest. So a lot of the archetypes that I see within the tarot just don't work for me with animals because I don't think animals are, um, do underhanded shit to other, they just are on sur in survival mode. It's just different. Whereas some humans are just, you know. So I think that it's like, like a bad rap for animals. So it's gotta be done in a certain kind of way in order for me. And I just don't, I don't like the pips in this. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. But I just never... Mm -mm. I don't get rid of it because I've got her other decks. Which I love. I love the archetypes and I love the spirit animals. I love them in oracles. Because then it's like the energy of that kind of animal that's been associated with them. But to use them within the tarot system... Mm. That's just really difficult for me. I do have, obviously, exceptions. And to each their own. If you can connect with that, I say brilliant. I wished I could. And I might one day. We'll see. I'm just not there quite yet. So the next question is, uh, what deck do you only keep for the art? <laughs> Okay, I had to really think about this because I don't really keep the decks just for the art. I keep them because I want to be able to utilize them. But there is this one deck. I got it on Kickstarter and a whole other, a whole bunch of other people. I think like 400 and some people also backed this particular deck. And after I got it, and I wanted it so bad. I remember this. I wanted it so bad. And when I finally got it, I was like, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> because what did I just get done saying? Granted, it was early on. This was, you know, one of those things where I thought I would be able to use it. And I was just so drawn into the flashy art on it that I didn't even stop to think that this was also an animal tarot. And that is the Untamed Mystery Tarot. And you know what? It's these bats. It's the gilding. The brown gilding, like earth, because I got the earthy one. That, right there. Right there. That's what I love about this deck. So, I always think, if I want to take pictures for, like, um... And I know this kind of sounds shallow, but that is the life of somebody that sells a product or sells, you know, their videos via what they put on their thumbnails. This makes an excellent, um, you know, spreads to make it look. And then, you know, you throw a crystal on there and it's just gorgeous. You know what I mean? So it's mainly for the art on the back, although... The art is really pretty. The shiny, I'm, I'm all about the bling. Do I read with it? No, I don't. That was a total, total miss for me. And I should have known better. But it was just, it was that. <laughs> it's that that got me the backs. Can you blame me? Look. <laughs> that is like the most beautiful back ever. All right. So the next question. 
what deck did you buy because everyone else did? And I don't really like saying that. I don't buy something because everybody else did. It's got to be something that draws me in because there's lots of decks that everybody else buys or that I see, you know, all over. It's like so popular. One of them will be in this list that I just, no, hard no for me. So it's not that, but it was one that I thought I would connect with and I didn't. I wasn't ready for it. I might be more ready for it now. I don't know. But that is the Hush Tarot. I thought the artwork was so beautiful. But when I started really looking at them, it was kind of like a disconnect for me with the artwork and what the card was. I've seen other people actually rename them, change them around a little bit, which is very clever. It's just I didn't want to do that. Um, and I know other people that absolutely love that deck. It just... Mm -mm. It just wasn't right for me, even though the artwork is stunning. So, so the next question is, what deck is over your head or just baffles you? So, I don't feel like pretty much any decks are over my head. Because it's just a matter of reading it. And learning it and then figuring out how it's going to work in your in your practice, in my opinion. But I did get this newer one. And I'm still, I've, I'm only about yay far into, not even that far. I've been preoccupied with other stuff. I think I'm a little bit past that. But reading about these, all of these different, um, meanings of these cards so it's not over my head it's just I haven't done enough research to figure out how I'm going to incorporate this particular deck into my practice so I want to read more about it maybe do a little bit of research more on the archetypes and um the shadow and the animus and anima and you know all that different stuff before I figure out how I want to incorporate this particular deck, super cool friggin' deck, into my practice. But I definitely want to. And the artwork is just stunning. So, I don't think it's over my head. I just think that I have to, you know, sit down and, and read. Use my brain. Okay, so that was the, sorry, Super Oracle by Usi. So, there was another one also that I can add to that as well, which is this one. The al Alchemy Elemo Elementals. Jeez, Alchemy Elementals, <laughs> if I can speak. Um, this one, like I said, it's not over my head because I, I have to invest my time. I have to be committed to learning the system. And as of yet, I've only dabbled in it. So, it's my own... It's my own fault. But at this moment, until I do that, it's about understanding how each of these work. But I'm very excited to. Let me show you. The cards are pretty cool. They're kind of big. I don't, I don't want to cut them down, though, because there's stuff on them. But... I think they're super cool. I love that they're elemental, but there's like different levels of the elements. So I think that part is really cool. I just need to also read and uh, then figure out how I want to use it in my practice. So more or less just spending quality time with it, focusing in on it. So those are my two for that. Sorry, I know I'm a cheater. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Okay, so let's see. Um, what deck surprised you? <laughs> okay, so the deck that surprised me is... Bum, bum, bum! <laughs> I know I said that I really don't like animals in my tarot, but this one I feel like is different. And the reason I feel like this is different, first of all, it's a fun deck. And it's Chrissy Ann. I just, 
I decided to give it a shot, especially after seeing Candy and the way that she talked about it on um, one of the, was it Three Girls, One Deck? I think so. How she talked about this particular deck. And the fact that they are the heads on people, believe it or not, that's the part where it makes it acceptable to me because instead of them being that cat or that giraffe or that deer or fish, they are hybrid beings. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? And I believe in like star seeds and hybrid beings and, and, uh, you know, if you look at ancient Egypt, all the different um, gods with the different types of heads, that's how I'm looking at this. Instead of them being that particular animal, they are hybrid beings. And that's how it will work for me. Besides, it's fun. It's just one of those kind of decks that you can just pull out for fun. You don't have to take it too seriously. And I don't have tons of decks like that in my collection. So that is what surprised me. My ability to just say, I want to try it. Also because I wanted to have Chris Ann's deck because I have all of her other decks. And I just love Chris Ann. So this one surprised me. So the next question is, what is, what deck doesn't really work for you, but you keep it because it's a collectible? And that would be this one. Giuseppe Maria Matelli. It's a Tarocini. It's like, uh, this was from... Gosh, maybe for us, 1665 maybe? I think this is Italian. This is before Marseille. It's a different kind of um, system. I mean, it's not even like a true full, like what we see now, modern tarot. But oh my gosh, the artwork is so cool. I love the historical um, significance of this deck and decks like this. Um, but I thought eventually I would like to create some sort of art installation with this super cool friggin' artwork. Like put it into a poster and hang it on the wall or something. So I hold on to it for that, but I don't read with it. I do think it is a super cool friggin' deck, though. I mean, that is so cool. So that would be Giuseppe Maria Matelli Terracini. <laughs> All right. So the next question is, What deck is your favorite gilded deck? Uh, what did I put here? Uh, oh, yeah, this is my new favorite gilded deck. The Fyodor Pavlov or Fyodor Pavlov Tarot. This was in my last um, video that I recorded. I don't know what will be put out first, but. Oh, my goodness. This cardstock is beautiful. The gilding, even though it is shiny gold, which, yeah, that's okay. But the fact that it's not sharp, it's nice and thin. I can shuffle this. Oh, I love the artwork. It is just a beautiful, beautiful deck. Look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. The limited palette just works also in this deck. Just beautiful. So that would be, yeah, the, uh, what did it call? Fyodor Pavlov. I don't know why I have such a problem with that. So next question is, 
What decks do you love but hate the card stack? One second. Okay. So, it's these. It's the 78 Tarot Elemental and the 78 Tarot Ecological. I love that these are collaboration decks. I love all that, but my gosh, I have not even worked with the gilding that much, or I mean with the decks that much because of the size, but the gilding, that just started wearing off like immediately. But I don't like the shiny bit. And it probably would be okay, but they're so friggin' huge. It is so hard. And see, here's the thing. I've seen like the newer one, the magical one, and I love that. I think it's gorgeous. I mean, not all cards, okay? But I like that when you're reading with this, especially if you're doing like live readings or something like that or several different readings in a row for people, that you get different feelings from the deck all in one. It's very versatile. I like that about it. I like that it's supporting a whole bunch of artists. I love that. But they're so damn huge. Why does it got to be so huge? And then you see the pocket or the mini. I wish that they had something in between because the mini is so little. I wish they had something in between like regular damn tarot size. It's so hard. When, when the when the cardstock is so difficult that it's hard to shuffle, and also because of the size, it's a miss for me. Because I don't, it's not as easy for me to work with. And I find that with both of these decks. So I find that it's a miss. I think that the minis are too many, and I think that these are just too big for my hands, okay? Maybe it works for other people that have bigger hands, but I don't. And I think the majority of uh, tarot readers in the world, not always, but I would say the vast majority are women. So, and a lot of women have small, and I don't even have the smallest hands of even my friends that I know. They have shorter fingers than me, short, tinier hands than me. I can think of a few people right off of the top of my head, which it's got to be a factor for. So, I wish that they would think about that, you know, and give another option and I just shuffled that in wrong. But I wish they would give another option that's kind of like a, I, I know that they are now for the mini, but another option for like a regular tarot size. So it would be those. So the next question is, what deck gives you the willies? <laughs> and that would be, <laughs> The Hieronymus Bosch Tarot. It's just, it's cool. Some of the artwork is really cool. But some of it I just have to ask, like, why? <laughs> like, oh. Why? funny but why <laughs> but there's some like okay that gives me the willies yeah it's just so weird mm. is that like cutting off people's ears is that what that is cut off ears I can't even tell that's just Like what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think the art is really cool. Don't get me wrong. I do. I think it's really cool. But some of it is just like, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit much. And some of the cards just... Uh, are definitely 
they, they definitely give me the willies. Or it's just stuff that I don't want to look at because it's just like so, I don't know. So, anywho, moving on. The box is kind of neat. All right, so the next question is, what is your favorite deck for shadow work? And that would be, let me find it, right here. It's an oracle deck, not a tarot. Earth, moon, and, and shadow oracle. I mean, I, I guess I can show you, but other than that, any tarot deck. Any tarot deck that you are bonded with and the right kind of spreads or the right kind of questions. So, yeah. So, the next question is, oh, what do you love in theory but not in practice? Okay. So, this was a deck that I backed on Kickstarter and I thought that the, the concept of this deck was really frigging good. But I thought the final copy definitely was not. I did the walkthrough and then I just read through the book a little bit. And I just was not happy with this. It seemed very limited. I thought if you're going to do something that's like myth and legends then have a cool write-up about each one of these legends, right? Not just a small little itty-bitty book that doesn't have a whole lot in there. And the writing is so, yeah. And the artwork seemed so vibrant to me on Kickstarter and in person. It uh, definitely fell short for me. Some of the artwork, don't get me wrong, the, the concept of all of it, I love the artwork. It's just, maybe it's from the printers. Maybe the printer didn't make it as vibrant as it appeared. Maybe it was just my coloration on my um, monitor that made it look more vibrant. But this has felt like a bit of a miss for me because of that. It was the only Kickstarter truly that I was not 100% really happy with. I don't even know if I can... I don't really care for the backs either. I don't know if I can even shuffle this one. Anyways, I don't need to do that on here. But, so, yeah. Maybe I would just have to make like my own guidebook or something with all these myths, you know, or maybe it can send you if you want to use it for like kind of like urban legends and myths and stuff like that. Shuffle and then see which one it is and then you do your own research kind of thing. It could be good for that, but the artwork just wasn't quite up to what I had hoped it was going to be. Not her artwork, but the actual colors that the printing produced what deck would you never use to read for someone else any kind of shadow work deck i feel like that is a personal thing i'm not gonna um do shadow work for somebody else so i would not use that kind of deck for somebody else um what deck would you never use for yourself i have nothing in my collection that i would never use for myself 18 what deck could you not bring yourself to buy this is where I was talking about earlier. There are several, like the lily fur that's on right now. I don't get it. I just, mm -mm, no. The artwork, I'm sorry, no, no. And I, it just, it doesn't work for me. The artwork doesn't work for me. The concept maybe, but I can't get past the artwork. If I don't want to use the artwork, it's not going to work for me. But the one that I can really think of that I just don't get that people just love is the Ritual Tarot. Like, I don't get that. Seriously. If you... <clears throat> that's just not for me. But I'm a person that likes having a structure 
to go by and then veer off once I know what that structure is. And with them not having even the nothing showing what they are, and I know I could go through and put like a little mark in the corner of what that card is supposed to be and then go from there. Because I like to use, the way that I work is I like to use the structure of the tarot and then veer off of it from my own per perceptions of what I get out of the art. But that art is just like so... Mm -mm. No, <laughs> you know, I just don't get. And especially, it is such an expensive deck. I just no. I so that it's the ritual tarot. Um, what deck could you not bring? That one, sorry. What's your favorite pip deck? My favorite pip deck is the Trion Fade Della Luna. I did not get the illustrated. No way. But I love, I love, love, love these pips. I love this deck. So that would be, yeah, the Tree on Fade Della Luna. So the next question is, what deck slaps you, slaps you with the truth? Or... Yeah, okay. I kind of read that <laughs> initially when I was pulling out a deck. I read that at like what slaps you, what deck slaps you in the face with the truth. And for me, that is really any um, RWS. And namely because I don't like working with it. And I think the deck knows that because I just really don't like the artwork. I... Even the... Um, what's it called? I, I don't know. The pic pictorial key. I don't even like that. I read through some of that because I've got it on my shelves. And I'm just like... No, <laughs> it's just like, so I would say that it's, it feels like a slap in the face because I can still read it like any other deck, but it just feels more harsh because it's this artwork, you know, because I don't really care for the artwork, so... Don't come at me. Sorry, guys. I just don't like RWS artwork for the most part. All right. So, what's the deck that got away? Oracle of Delphi or Tarot of, Tarot of Delphi. That's the one that got away. And also the uh, Maddie, Madam Lydia Wilhelmina's. And I just recently, for the first time, seen on... Um, Tarot Geeks, Dana, her channel, um, what was it, the, oh, damn, and I even made a comment to it, what was the name of it, the Jane Austen Tarot, or Tarot of Jane Austen, or Jane Austen, I don't remember, but I had never heard of that one before until I had seen her video, and I was like, oh my gosh, because I love Jane Austen stories. I love, love, love them. So <clears throat> that one got away. So there you go, guys. I think I got, I think I did all the questions. Sometimes I end up skipping these on accident, but I think I got them all. So thank you for spending this time with me. And thank you, Lisa and Peggy, for creating a really awesome and fun hashtag. And I am sending love to you always.